So in our previous video, we were looking at the characteristics of a monopolistic competition and we were comparing it to a monopoly and a perfectly competitive market. So now let's look at the decision of how much to produce and what price to charge. And we said in our previous video that monopolistically competitive markets, because they differentiate themselves, gain market power and get to act like a monopoly. So we need to do a bit of a refresh and recall what does it mean to act like a monopoly. And so we'll see what does it mean to act like a monopoly versus a perfectly competitive market. And so then we can understand better how a monopolistically competitive market works. So let's start with the monopoly. Monopolistically competitive markets act like a monopoly in the short run. So when we look at a monopoly, how does a monopoly know how much to produce? Well, we know that a monopoly will produce, because they're run by rational people, you do things as long as the extra benefit is more than the extra cost. You don't do things when the extra cost is more than the extra benefit. So if we're looking at the extra cost, we already have marginal cost here on our cost curves. But we, then we have to look at the extra benefit. Well, what's the extra benefit of selling one more unit? That's the marginal revenue, the extra money we bring in from selling one more unit. So a monopoly produces until marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So let's look at where that is on this graph. So we have our marginal cost curve. And if you have a demand curve, made, that's a relationship between prices and quantities, you can calculate marginal revenue. And we did that in a previous video. We looked at how this marginal revenue curve is calculated. So we'll take it as given here, but you should know how to calculate marginal revenue. All right, so we're looking for the point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That happens here, okay? So a monopoly, since they're gonna produce until marginal revenue equals marginal cost, in this case would be producing a quantity here of 40. Now, how much does the monopoly charge? Okay. Well, can the monopoly charge anything they want? No, right? They are limited by the fact that if you charge a million dollars for your product, people aren't willing to buy it. They can't afford to buy it. So even if you're the only game in town, doesn't necessarily mean people are gonna buy. So a monopoly can't charge anything they want. They have to consider what customers are willing and able to pay which curve here shows the amount that customers would be willing and able to pay for different quantities? Well, that's the demand curve, right? So on this graph here, we go at our quantity of 40 and we say, okay, well, if we provide 40 units as a monopoly, how much would the customers be willing to pay for that amount? And we can go up to this demand curve and it shows the relationship between price and quantity and says if 40 units are available, the price people are willing to pay would be $13. Okay. Now, let's compare that to a perfectly competitive market. In a perfectly competitive market, how do we decide how much companies produce. So remember, in a perfectly competitive market, individual companies are price takers. They take the price as given because they have no market power to influence the price. So if they take the price as given, what determines the price in the market? Well, the perfectly competitive market, the price is set by what? supply and demand. So where on this graph would be supply and demand? Well, we see a demand curve. I don't see a supply curve. Where did the supply curve come from? We get the market supply by adding up the quantity supplied at each price for each firm. 
And where did that individual supply curve come from for the perfectly competitive market? It came from their marginal cost. So the market supply curve is equivalent to the monopoly's marginal cost curve. Okay. In a perfectly competitive market, we take the price as given, price being set by supply and demand, and we produce until price is equal to marginal cost. So where is that on this graph? Supply and demand are intersecting here. So it looks like the quantity we're looking at is, what, 50? And the price is, what's that, about 11? Quantity equals 50, price is equal to 11. So the perfectly competitive market, notice, produces more at a lower price. The monopoly intentionally produces less so that it can charge more. What about the monopolistically competitive market? So monopolistically competitive market has differentiated itself, okay, so that it gains more market power, which means in the short run, the monopolistic competition acts like a monopoly. But the difference between the monopoly graph and the monopolistically competitive graph is that this demand that you see here is the demand for your company. Because remember, you're slightly different from all the other restaurants or accounting firms in town. And so this demand curve represents the demand for your special product, your special good or service, not the overall market. For a monopoly, this would be the market demand we'd see here. For a monopolistically competitive one, it's just you because you're different. And so we have to consider the demand for your special combination of convenience, ambiance, customization, all those things, okay? All right, so in the short run, the monopolistically competitive market is going to act like a monopoly which means it's going to produce until marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And the quantity the monopolistically competitive market produces will be 40. And the price they charge, remember, you're different from everybody else, from all those other restaurants. So you consider the demand for your services, for your product, for your restaurant. And so you look at what are people willing to charge for the amount of dinners that you make. And so here we go up to the demand curve and we get a price of 13. So in the short run, the monopolistically competitive market acts like a monopoly. Produces until marginal revenue equals marginal cost. Go up to the demand curve to determine the price. The difference is, is that we're looking at the individual demand for your unique product. Now, one more piece to this is economic profit. How do we calculate economic profit? Well, we look at the difference between the price and what? And the average total cost. So it looks like here for a quantity of 40, that per unit cost is 10. The price we're charging is 13, so 13 minus 10, right, $3, times the 40 quantity that we're selling. So that'll give us our economic profit, $3 times 40, $120. This is our economic profit. So whether you're a monopoly or a monopolistically competitive market, you are making economic profit in the short run. Now recall the perfectly competitive market, were they able to make economic profit? Okay. So remember that no barriers to entry and exit, they had no economic profit in the long run 
But if you were able to do things like innovate, okay, do things more efficiently, the perfectly competitive market, you could make economic profit in the short run. In a monopolistically competitive market, you can make even more economic profit. Monopolies make even more. Okay. The difference between the monopolistically competitive market and the monopoly in terms of economic profit, in the short run, it's the same because they're both acting like the monopoly. The difference is the long run. What happens in the long run? A monopoly, because there are barriers to entry or exit, can sustain this economic profit. But the monopolistically competitive market, there's a difference between the short run and the long run. In the short run, they get to act like a monopoly. But because the monopolistically competitive market has no barriers to entry or exit, when people see you differentiating your restaurant, so your Ethiopian restaurant, you're the only one in town, and now someone starts up and offers their Ethiopian restaurant, now you're similar. You're no longer different. And so now you're competing based on price. So in the long run, there's actually a change to this graph. So I'm actually just going to see if I can copy this. There we go. All right. So this is your monopolistically competitive market in the short run. You're making economic profit. We saw here. Okay. Now, somebody comes in and starts to differentiate themselves the exact same way you do. So what happens to the demand for your restaurant for your product well if we now instead of just having one Ethiopian restaurant in town we now have two the demand for your restaurant will decrease okay because now some of your customers are going the other place and what happens to the slope of the demand curve remember before if we could create brand recognition and customer loyalty then people will keep coming back. They'll ask for us and they'll keep coming back, which made people less sensitive to price change. But now if there's two restaurants that are very similar, people become more sensitive to the price. You lose some of your market power, you're now competing more on price. So when we start to become more sensitive to a price change, what does that change on the demand curve? changes the slope, and demand becomes more elastic. And we know that elastic demand has a flatter slope. So demand decreases and it flattens out. And this is where I super suck at drawing these graphs. So I'm just gonna jump to this one here. So here we were at our demand curve before. Now notice here demand has decreased and it has gotten flatter. What does that do to our decision about how much to produce? We still produce until marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That's here. We still go up to the demand curve. Now we got to go to the new demand curve, not the old demand curve. So we still go up to the new demand, or we still go up to the demand curve to set the price. But notice the difference here is where we are on that new demand curve. Notice that that price is now on that long run average total cost curve. So what happens to economic profit to the monopolistically competitive market? If they lose their, differ their differentiation, now they're competing based on price. There are lots of sellers. Everybody knows what the prices are. If all the Ethiopian restaurants are the same in terms of quality, 
then you're competing solely based on price. It pushes the price down until we're at that long run average cost curve. So the monopolistically competitive market has no economic profit in the long run. So the difference between the monopoly and the monopolistically competitive market is the monopoly gets to keep its economic profit, whereas the monopolistically competitive market, when it loses its differentiation, it becomes like the perfectly competitive market and then has no economic profit in the long run.